All right, it's 2008, I just got my license and it's time to start shopping around for my first truck. Chevy, Ford, Dodge, Toyota, Nissan, Hummer, Silverado, F-150, OBS. I mean, the options are really endless. So I head on out to the old Craigslist back when it was cool to surf for new toys because, well, let's be honest, the Zuck wasn't around. And if he was, Marketplace just had not been added to the old Facebook yet. And I found the perfect truck to go scoop up. Head on out, meet up with the owner with my parents because, well, let's face it, I'm 16 and I think I know everything there is to know about anything, but I don't, so dad is there to show me the ropes of buying my first truck. I get my eyes set on this truck and there is nothing my freaking dad can say about it. Nothing, I absolutely want it. Have you ever had that happen? You get tunnel vision because, well, you got the money, you end up going to meet up, meeting up with the guy, you don't care what's wrong with it, and you already have the money in hand, and you refuse to go home empty-handed. So you pay the man, and you're on your way home with your new-to-you truck, and then boom! Out of freaking nowhere, you blow the thing up, the transmission fails, your heads go to sh and God forbid you throw a piston to the freaking moon bud. I'm Lawson, you guys can find me at Lawson.co on Instagram, and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about some trucks that just should have never existed, whether that be due to poor aftermarket support, ugly, or just terrible issues that no one wants to deal with when you go out and pick up your new to you truck. Like, why would you wanna go pick up a new vehicle and have to deal with issues? Come on, man. If you have a better truck that should be on this list and we failed to mention it, drop it below in the comments. Come on, let's get the comment section popping. Let's talk trucks and talk about some experiences that you guys had when you bought your first truck. One last thing before we hop into it, if you guys need anything for your truck, wheels, tires, suspension, accessories, performance, of course, you guys can find that all on our website at customoffsets.com. We're also running Black Friday deals all freaking month long. You guys are not gonna wanna miss out on these deals. They're live, go check them out. Let's hop into it. It's 2005, George Bush started his second term, Hurricane Katrina hit the shores of the Gulf of Mexico, and Honda jumped into the American automotive way of life, the pickup truck, with their car, truck thing, I don't even know what this thing is, the Honda Ridgeline. Now down in the experimental lab of Honda, they slapped a pickup bed onto an Acura MDX, which if you didn't know, is an SUV, and they debuted it at SEMA as a light utility truck concept. Now, speaking of SEMA, we were currently were just there, so be on the lookout for our SEMA content because you guys just aren't gonna wanna freaking miss it. It's SEMA, it's the best of the best. Don't miss it. Freaking slapped a pickup truck bed onto an SUV. Come on, man. Where and anywhere that does that sound like a truck? The Gen 1s would live on for a decade from 2005 to 2015 until Honda would take it up a notch, making the Gen 2s better and stronger. But why should they have stayed down in the experimental lab of Honda? Well, you see, the Honda Ridgeline was designed and manufactured with something called a unibody, something that trucks just don't have. If you guys don't know what I mean by a unibody, this is where a vehicle has their frame integrated into the body construction of the vehicle, making all panels part of the structural design of the body. Does not sound like a truck whatsoever. Or how about the fact that the things are front wheel freaking drive, man. Front wheel drive, okay? When you think truck, do you think front wheel drive? The answer is freaking no, and if it's yes, get out of here. In what world does a two wheel drive trucks be front wheel drive? And I say truck very loosely, it's just getting weird, all right? It's gotta go, we're moving on. Around the same time the Honda was designing the all new Ridgeline, Ford was putting out the all new 11th generation F-150. Imagine seeing this new truck with a massive appearance update. Like, have you seen the 10th gens? The roundy 10th gens? Like, eh, eh. 11th gens were way better appearance wise. Now sure, the 11th gens might have looked a ton better than the 10th gens, but with all the hype came a ton of issues. Powered by the 5.4 liter Triton, arguably one of Ford's worst engines ever produced, these things had some real issues. First up, let's talk about the ignition system. I don't wanna blame the failures of these engines just because of spark plugs and coil packs, but the two valves literally had the spark plugs blow out of the head of the engine. Like literally, they shot. Like see you later blowout. Like launch out like Apollo was launched out into space. I'm just saying, when I think of vehicles that probably shouldn't have made it, this thing screams, pick me, man. Like, why would you want to go and pick that up and drive it home and have to deal with that? It's just, it's just not something you should have to do. 
Now the three valves would only have issues with the spark plugs breaking off, but end up being a pretty easy repair. Now across the 5.4 Triton, there's also timing chain issues. I remember one of the guys here had an F-150 with timing chain issues and he just like straight up sold the thing. Like he was just, see you later, done. Didn't want to deal with it, was over it, sold to someone and told the buyer that it had to be done. The buyer was like a mechanic who did timing chain, so it all worked out. But uh, come on, man, timing chains can be a freaking nightmare. If that wasn't enough, Ford decided to put the fuel pump driver module near the rear of the steel frame, leaving it out in the elements such as salt, water, dirt, etc., causing it to fail and leave your 5.4 Triton stalled out and unable to start. Oh, and last but not least, don't forget about the notorious oil pan gas leak. Honestly, not really a fault or failure on Ford's part of the 5.4 Triton itself. Just something to note that these engines are getting older, more worn down, and just resulting in needing to be serviced and repaired. So just something to keep in mind if you guys are going to pick up an 11th gen F-150. All right, let's move on. Now it's 2003. I'm 11 years old. Bad Boys 2 just dropped, and I love this movie. Mike and Marcus are chasing the drug lord down in Cuba and Mike steals the freaking yellow Hummer. Boo, like jumps it. He's going down the hill, driving it through villas and like crack houses. Boom, drives it through the freaking mansion. Who the hell didn't love Bad Boys 2? Who didn't want an H2 after that? Although that was cool, let's just face it, the H2 SUT though, not so much. Like why was the H2 SUT produced? Like you slapped a freaking truck bed, a lackluster truck bed at that onto an H2 but it gets better. The bed's 47 inches wide and only 34 and a half inches long, but that's less than three feet for a freaking truck bed. What a freaking waste. Like what the hell are you gonna do to and haul back there in that three foot bed? A dirt bike? Nope. Cases of beer? Doubt it. Bags for the weekend to go on a trip? Hell nah. It's just super sad. Like how can you consider that a truck? I'm seeing a theme here where manufacturers want to slap beds on SUVs or cars and consider them trucks. I just don't see it here. And especially with a less than three foot bed. Sure, you could argue that when folding the rear mid gate, which is like the in-between tailgate, in between the cab and the three foot bed, and that's just what Hummer called it. But anyways, when you fold that down, you could get up to six feet of space. So like if you had to haul some lumber, you'd have like, tell the kids they had to walk home and then like to fold the seats down and then you put the lumber in there and then you got like six feet. But then like if you couldn't fit that and you had to figure out something, it just didn't make sense, okay? It doesn't make sense. You shouldn't have to tell your kids to go hiking when you have to haul some stuff. Three foot bed, come on. Man. Same engine, same MPGs, same tank size, same cabin size as the H2 standard. So like why? To offer a sport utility truck versus your SUV that's the same exact thing as what you're already selling. These things got like five miles per gallon, didn't look the greatest, weren't as functional as a true truck, and were freaking expensive. That's why you always saw them like parked out at mansions and stuff, it just, the, it just didn't make sense. Now before we go any further, I have to remind you guys that we're giving away a whole truck, man. And it's not one of these like H2 SUTs, Honda Ridge Lines. It's a cool truck, it's a super duty baby, let's go. Now sure, that's cool and all, but what's even cooler is helping the Warrior Built Foundation. Why? Well, because they literally help our heroes who come home from fighting for our country for us to live our lives freely. They help our heroes get back into everyday life, help amputees do things they didn't think they would ever be able to do again, like ride a motorcycle and do so much more, man. Help us make a difference and donate to these amazing guys at this amazing foundation. Now, if you would like to help us out, just head on out to customoffsets.com forward slash giveaway, scoop up a shirt or whatever you guys feel like getting. And you also get entered to win the truck as well as the current wheel giveaway. We love giving back to the community. We've been doing it for years and thanks to you guys, we're able to continue to do so. So personally, I would like to thank you guys and make sure you guys head on out customoffsets.com forward slash giveaway. All right, let's hop back in it. Time to kick it back a couple more years to 2001 while Ford continued to put out great trucks, they decided that they wanted to bring another pickup truck to the market, the Ford Explorer Sport Track. Now, before we get into why these things should have stayed in the design team's heads, let's go over how things came to life. Now, I'm sure you can see some similarities to another Ford vehicle, the Ford Explorer SUV. 
The Ford Explorer Sport Track was brought to life to fill the gap between the small Ford Ranger and the Ford F-150. Fun fact, these things were the very first mid-size pickup produced by Ford and then followed with the Chevy Avalanche as well as the Honda, not truck, Honda car, unibody bridge line thing that we talked about earlier in the video, which were all car slash SUV slash truck wannabe whatever's with truck bed slapped onto it, dude. It just doesn't make any sense. I'm just saying, Ford literally lengthened the Explorer SUV chassis and was Frankenstein out of parts from three other Ford vehicles. Ford took the front bumper and fenders from the two-door Explorer Sports, the cab from the four-door Ford Explorers with some slight modifications to the rear doors, and the F-150 tailgate. Like, they're just like, yeah, F-150, we're just gonna, we're just gonna take your tailgate, call it good. Oh, plus then they slapped the bed on the truck with some kind of made up plastic composite, like sick. But why shouldn't these things have existed? These surfer dude cruising machines were essentially a Ford Explorer with just a pickup bed slapped onto it. One, that's why they shouldn't have existed. They eventually would be discontinued because there was a huge drop off in demand. Now, sure, it might be because of, you know, the rising gas prices in 2010 when the country was like struggling and stuff, but hey, we care about smiles per gallon here, not miles per gallon. You're telling me that you would rather have one of these freaking sport tracks than a Ford fucking Ranger? Get out of here. Sorry, Ford Explorer Sport Track. You gotta go. All right, guys, last one, and it's a Chevy. Released in 2003, this Super Sport Roadster hit the streets. That's right, I said Super Sport Roadster. Sounds not like a truck to me, bud. Well, because the Chevy SSR really wasn't a truck. Now, I remember seeing this thing when I was a kid cruising down the street, being like, what the heck is that thing? Thinking it was super cool and unique because, well, it did look really weird, really cool, really unique, all combined, and it was unique. There was only 24,000 of them produced in the three years of its existence. That thing looked like it was straight out of Hot Wheels, man. But come on, Hot Cars even called it a car slash truck hybrid. That's right, a car slash truck hybrid. I feel like I've already made my point here, but let's keep going. This thing has a retractable hard top, making it a convertible. Again, not like a truck. But I do like Chevy's attempt at redesigning the 1947 to 1955 Chevy pickup, because that's what they were trying to accomplish with the SSR. If you put these things side by side, you can literally see resemblance in why Chevy did exactly what they did. Unfortunately, they did miss the mark, making it a super like bubbly machine, leaving us all kind of disappointed. Is there a truck or car truck or hybrid truck or whatever that we missed that should have been on this list of trucks that shouldn't have existed? Let us know down in the comment section below. Once again, we want to chat with you guys down in the comments, so let us know down below. If you guys need anything for your cool truck that should exist, we're actually running a Black Friday's deal all month freaking long. There's so many deals. So don't miss out and get your truck looking better than ever. With that, I'm Lawson. I'll see you guys in the next one.